the victim managed to hoist herself up and walk away. See, right over here, there's a growing group of protesters who say they're upset about what happened here tonight, and they say that they want answers. What do you have to say for yourself? I, I made a mistake. I, I'm sorry. The bar owner says the thief got in and out of this door in a matter of seconds. A pair of burglars broke in and stole this kitten. The helicopter is ferrying pieces of the blimp from a valley about half a mile away here to a landing zone. This line may go on and on and on and on. First glance, it almost looks like these trees are blooming, but it's not spring. It's insulation scattered by the storm. Well, here in Schuylkill County, expected snow, just not this much. So there's goat yoga, goat hiking, but here's the fun thing. You can also come up with your own goat activity. Come on, Lily. Take a look at the one seat glider that went face first into that house. The amazing part, the pilot walked out of the plane into the attic and onto the street. I'm out in the kitchen, you know, doing dishes, getting supper ready, and I heard a boom. Neighbors could not believe their eyes when they went to see what made so much noise. I come outside and then I see it, the plane in the roof. With the family from the Red House safely outside, people went to help the pilot. He was up in the attic walking around. I said, come on out. He said, not until I find my glasses. He was all right. And that was it. Dan Barry's fire chief and aviator himself explains this sort of one seat glider, which does have a motor, is a rare sight at the airport. It's a very rare model and very beautiful aircraft. Uh, it's just unusual. Seeing it like this, un. Forgettable. It's holy moly, that's what you think. It's like, I can't believe that happened. The pilot was taken to the hospital to be checked out. The NTSB will be here in the morning to investigate. Eric, take a look as you think about the fact that this house was built almost a century before the American Revolution and now most of it is gone. Neighbors are incensed. It just seems to me like a tornado went through it and, uh, you know, that's what it looks like, right? The house at 21 Willow Street stood the test of time. I can't believe it. It's crazy. It's, it's nuts. Now with the walls stripped. Hand-hewn beams, hand-cut nails. You can see rare details. Before there were sawmills, this is when this was built. In 1677, the King of England gave the place to Thomas Hyatt. It's terrible. Yeah. It's a shock. More recently, Norwalk preservationist Margaret Moore lived in the home. She's probably rolling over in her grave right now. So what went wrong? I received a phone call about 2.30 Saturday afternoon. According to the building department, the owners only had a permit to renovate. I was asked if I knew about the demolition taking place at this address? And I said no. Demolition requires review by the Historical Commission. This was a blatant disregard of the process. Members say this is exactly what's not supposed to happen. The worst. This is Definitely the worst. worst. This is the oldest house. This is like, well, was the oldest house, because now it's, it's just awful. So what happens next? Code violation and fines are up to the city, but the state's attorney would determine if criminal charges apply. According to city records, the current owners bought the place last November. We were unable to reach them tonight or the contractor. In Norwalk, Suzanne Goldklang, News 12, Connecticut. This little white house may look like classic New England, but open the door, you're on a trip to Barbie world. These are my bookshelves. Obviously, I have Barbie incorporated here. Via the imagination of Johnny Carmack. They look like gumball. AKA vintage show pony. It's just me. There's like no filters. There's no nothing. It's, this is my real home. These are the things I like. The rosy parlor, the groovy blue living room. Everyone on TikTok has blown this this room up. The surreal sanctuary filled with fruit. This apple tree. All inspired by the doll. On Christmas, I would have to open my Barbies after everyone else opened their gifts. And it was it was something I felt shame about. That got Johnny through a challenging childhood. So I was like, one day I'm gonna live in my own Barbie's dream house. 
Johnny and his partner bought the house during the pandemic. Look at how ugly. It was giving, why did I just buy this house? Presenting an opportunity to make his fantasy real. I feel like so complete in this space. So it's like, it's full circle. Selling vintage furnishings provided a new profession. Like I just sent a lamp last week to Australia. If someone buys the furniture in Johnny's house, it's no problem because he's got extra in the garage. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Demand skyrocketed after a certain movie came out. I was shook. I was like, oh my gosh, it's finally happening. Adding to his loyal following. Where have you been? You are late to the garden party, my love. There's real people out there who it touches their lives. Johnny's top tip. You should live in color. You don't need to be a doll to live your dream. The world outside your front door can be really cruel and ugly. Just let go of like fear of judgment. In Danbury, Suzanne Goldklein, News 12, Connecticut. Serene and green, Rising Star Rescue offers horses a haven. We can't rescue all the horses. We cannot rescue all the horses. A hitching post on the trail to a better life. When Lilith came in, she would <sighs> truly try and hurt humans um, because she had been so hurt. Lilith was slated for slaughter. She would shake and try really to kick you to put you in the hospital or kill you. That is Lilith. Good girl. Her salvation, 16-year-old Kylie. I had a lot of things in common with this horse. When the two met, we didn't click right away. They were both hurting. So I had a lot of anxiety. I was in a very dark place when I found her. I'm Kylie, and this is Lilith. As Kylie got to know Lilith, something shifted. I was suffering from anorexia, and I was not strong enough for her. We found this horse that had been beaten and abused and starved and was going through a lot of the same things that she went through. The show ring dropout dreamed of riding again. When she was at the peak of her illness, she didn't really weigh enough. She didn't have the energy. I went away and I wanted to get better. It's really emotional. <laughs> Kylie returned after gaining 25 pounds in treatment. And I worked on myself so hard for her. Back at the barn, progress picked up. I came back and we just started every day, just boom, being here with her, sitting in her stall for hours. She was laying down and I came to sit with her and she just put her head on my lap. Then I said, can we get on her? Because I just felt that this was the right moment. She's like, I'm scared. Good. June 23rd, Kylie and Lilith take a ride. You bring them to every doctor you can imagine. You know, there's no stone left unturned. So the fact that um, this horse, who was almost slaughtered, ended up being the thing that saved her life, it's unimaginable. Even as a little girl, horses enchanted Kylie. Good girl. But it took Lilith and Rising Star to help her find the path home. I personally think she helped me more. <laughs> but, um, because I think we couldn't have done it without each other. In Wilton, Suzanne Goldklang, News 12, Connecticut.